Well, hello there, Paper Crafters. Thanks so much for joining us again here at Paper Crafters Corner. My name is Stephanie Hackney, and I'm the owner and content editor and community wrangler and leader um, and addicted paper crafter just like you. And today we are going to be doing a product review, something we've started to become known for. So again, it's all about information, inspiration, and entertainment for paper crafters around the globe. And we've got 145 countries visiting our site now. So hopefully you'll get a chance to interact with them either on our blog, uh, which you can also subscribe to. We have a daily and a weekly blog feed, and that way you get a reminder about everything we have going on on the site. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, a Pinterest account, a Twitter account, and a Google Plus account. We invite you to join us on any of those, and we'll put the links to all of those uh, different places down there in the show notes at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. And then at the end of the uh, video, we're also going to be providing a link to the blog post that's associated with this. So uh, if you have any questions or you want additional information, we'll invite you to come to the blog post and check us out there. And you can always leave a comment there in the comments of the blog, or you can also leave them here right on YouTube, and we will make sure that we get an answer back to you. And if it's something we don't know, we'll sure try to find out for you. So let's get started. Today's product is a brand new product, something I think probably lots of you have on your holiday wish list this year. It was just announced and it is by Brother. Uh, Brother is known for their scanners and printers and office machines. And now they have a brand new machine for paper crafting and it is called the Brother Scan and Cut. And that's S-C-A-N-N-C-U-T. So scan and cut, uh, and we will provide information on where you can purchase the machine and get more information, uh, again, down in the show notes at the end of the video. So let's get started, shall we? So what you're looking at here is the top of the machine. The machine that I have is the CM100, model number's right here also known as the red machine uh, and there's another machine that they have available as well called the cm 550 dx and it has blue decorations around on it um, and the primary difference between the two machines from everything that i've read um, and the research that i've done is that the blue machine really is ideal for quilters it's got a lot more uh, different files um, within the machine itself um, and there's a lot of extra accessories that come with it. So it actually is about $200 more in value. Um, so if that's something that sounds intriguing to you, um, hopefully you can find a review on that product as well. But the one we're going to review today, again, is the CM100. Um, and uh, we're going to get right to it and share all the items that came in the box and then tell you quite a bit about the machine itself. So to begin with, you get this machine and you get a um, AC adapter and an AC power plug. And this power plug end goes right into here. You're just gonna plug it in like this. And then this end goes in the back of your machine, which we'll do shortly. And this end, of course, into the power supply, um, which is your wall outlet. You're also going to get a whole bunch of manuals. So we're gonna start with this little uh, flyer that was placed right on top. And this is in reference to some feedback that the company got about being able to take uh, the images that lots of us already have on our computers, things like cut files, and be able to convert them to a format that the Brother machine can read. And so Brother has, um, very nicely set up this uh, website and now you can go there and you can sign up for an account it's a free account all you have to do is give your email um, and then you can sign up and then it enables you to take other types of files convert them and then use them on this machine um, next you're going to find the operation manual and as you can see I've already tagged mine I've uh, put a little flag here where the blade settings are um, and I suggest you know that as you read through the manual um, you know go in there and earmark pages or put little tabs on them so that it makes it easy if you ever need to go back and reference them um, 
one thing that's that I'm going to share with you is I am not somebody who usually reads manuals. Um, I usually get a machine and try it out and make mistakes, and but I figure it out eventually. Um, my husband, on the other hand, is one of those people who will read the manual for a toaster. So um, I think he's probably going to be pretty proud that he saw that I actually read the whole manual cover to cover. Um, and primarily because I knew I'd be doing this review and I wanted to first of all make sure that I didn't do anything wrong and break the machine. Uh, and secondly that I wanted to be able to have as much information as possible to share with you about the machine as we're going through the review. So I did go through and take lots of lots of notes and they're hanging up in front of me as I'm going through the review. So if you see me glance up occasionally that's because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything that's important to share with you. Okay so you will get a, a full manual here. Um, then you'll, there's also one here in Spanish for our Spanish speaking audience. And then you're going to get this sheet that has a list of all the accessories and tells a little bit about them and then has a part code in case you need to replace them. Um, so this is a handy little thing to hold on to and we'll walk through all the parts and accessories um, but I just wanted you to see that this does come with it. And then you're going to get this very handy little quick reference guide and you'll see a big red note when you open your box that tells you to, to reference this first before setting up your machine. And um, it opens up and it basically has uh, wording and then all sorts of visuals that walk you through the whole setup. As you can see, lots and lots and lots of information, but very, very easy to set up. Um, and then it also has this great guide. Um, it's a reference guide for the mat, the cutting blade, and the sheets that come with the unit, and then how to set the blade um, scale and also the pressure. Um, and these are all really important things. So I would suggest keeping this maybe in a, in a sheet protector and keep it right with your machine so that you've got that handy anytime you need to look through it. The next thing you're going to get is a pattern list and this little pattern book um, basically is a list of all the patterns that are included inside your machine. Okay, and it's got all sorts of cute little things and then some geometric shapes um, and it's got uh, things for holidays and banners and flags, lots of really trendy things now. Um, and then lots of sayings and little quotes that you could use. These would be great for Project Life or your December daily. Um, some borders and then five different fonts that you can use here and then a whole bunch of quilt blocks so whether you're a paper quilter or a fabric quilter um, there's lots and lots of different designs here that you can that you can choose from um, and because I am primarily uh, focused on paper crafting we're not going to cover much in the way of the quilting and the fabric but this is still a very handy guide to have. Um, and then finally, there is a basic quilting guide that comes in here and it basically teaches you how to do stitches, how to do everything to make a quilt. And again, both in English and in Spanish. So if you're into quilting or want to learn how to quilt, this might be a great guide for you to start with. The next, we're going to find two mats and these actually come laid over your machine like this when you pull them out of the box and what you're going to notice on these is that there's two different colors. So the top one is the low tack adhesive mat and the bottom one is the standard mat. So the standard mat is purple, the low tack adhesive is turquoise and you're also going to notice that they have arrows on both ends so here and here and what that indicates is that you can put the mat in this way or this way it doesn't really matter the machine will pick it up either way and it's got these marks that help the machine to see where the mat is and then finally the mat work area is this white area here you want to put your any materials that you want to cut or scan you want to put them within this border here and one thing you'll notice about that is that this is a full 12 inches however when you lose that space here and you lose the space here this becomes 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters so that's important to note if you're going to be making a scrapbook layout and perhaps you want to cut some things out and then you want this to be your background paper uh, you may need to put a 12 by 12 sheet under it if you're putting this in a 12 by 12 sheet protector and you don't want your page to move around so again your finished working size in here is 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters um, two things to note. So the low tack adhesive mat is really made for thin materials. 
Um, if you are going to be working with uh, like copier paper, if you've drawn some things and you want to cut that out of copier paper, uh, or if you're using a thin pattern paper, then you could use the low tack adhesive mat. When I did a quick test and I used a little bit heavier uh, pattern paper that was just a slight bit um, thinner than cardstock, I found that it didn't stick very well to the low tack adhesive mat. And in that case, I would be using the standard mat, and that's this purple one here. Okay, so both of these come with the unit, and I'm going to tell you one important thing about them. Both of them come with this sheet that pulls off. Do not throw this away or get it messed up. That is the protection sheet for your mat. It keeps dirt and dust off the mat, keeps the adhesive fresh underneath. So when you pull this off to use your mat, keep this sitting someplace safe, and then you always want to put it back on your mat when you're finished. Okay, um, and then... We've got a little pouch of tools. I love that they give you a place to keep it. And there are actually four items that come in this pouch. One of them is already in our machine. So let me take that out and show you. So you've got this blade, which is turquoise, and this is your standard blade. This is the blade you're going to use most of the time for your standard materials. You also have a deep cut blade, and that one's purple. Um, and this one is for cutting thicker materials, um, even up to as thick as leather. I've seen some videos where people put leather on the mat and were able to cut it out. So that's, this is the deep cut blade for that. Then you're going to get a small spatula, um, and this is to lift the pieces up off your mat when, when you are finished cutting them. And then you're going to get a stylus, and the stylus is for use on this display screen here. One thing I want to point out on this spatula, no, it is not like any other spatula, and yes, you do want to make sure you keep it. And the reason being is when you turn it over, you'll see this little area here. This is an area that you use to ch out, change out the blades which are inside this blade housing. So when you go to change the, the blade in here, the blades in the center there, you're going to be taking this apart and you're going to be sticking this in and then pulling this up and your blade stays here while you put the new one in. Um, and hopefully we can do a quick uh, video of that um, when we do a change out of our blade so I can show you what that looks like. But I just wanted to point that out that it's important that you hold on to this because that's this little area back here was actually designed to be able to um, make the blade changing a little bit easier. So be sure you keep this in a safe place. You want to just keep it right back here in your little pouch. And I'm going to put those two items back in. Um, and then two, two more things. You're also going to get these two blue sheets. And they are primarily for cutting fabric. Um, and what you're going to notice is that there is a shiny side, this shiny side, and there is a flat side, like a paper side. Um, it's really important when you go to use these that you're distinguishing between these two. So when you want to use fabric in your machine, you're going to use one of these mats and you're going to put this, this material, shiny side down on your mat. Okay, so you'd be, you'd be taking off your cover here, you'd be putting this shiny side down on your mat, and then you're going to peel back the covering. And again, you want to keep the covering. You're going to peel this back, and this is tacky here. And then you lay your fabric onto this tacky surface, smooth it out. And the nice thing about this is that this will not deposit any stickiness onto your fabric. It's just going to hold it in place while the cutting or scanning is taking place. And then you can pull it off afterwards. Okay, so you've got two sheets of that. Um, and again, flat side, shiny side, make sure you put them shiny side down on the mat. And then finally, you're going to get this tube. And this little tube is actually a roll of contact paper. Um, and this is for use when you are going to be doing things like applique. And you're actually going to take this and you're going to put it on the back of your fabric and iron it on. And then you would put your fabric in here and do your scanning and cutting. Um, this does not come off the fabric. So unlike the other sheets that I just showed you, this sheet does not come off. Once you iron it on, it is on there. So you probably wouldn't want to use it 
um, for quilting because you you're going to want the back of your fabric to uh, not have anything on it um, but when you're doing things like applique then you know this would work perfectly and then you can use it for attaching to whatever you're going to apply the applique to so that covers all of the items that were inside the box okay so let's get started on walking through the machine the different parts of the machine and how we're going to get it set up and used okay so the parts of the machine so first you have a cover um, this is the cover here um, it is uh, basically um, called the front tray cover and it's here to protect the machine and it just folds down very simply like that kind of comes up slowly locks into place and then comes down like this there's no uh, locking mechanism on it this is the carriage and this is the element that holds your your blade holder with a, which has your blade in it and then this is going to slide back and forth and do the uh, cutting for you so let's get out one of our blades in this case we're going to use the regular blade and this is going to go inside here one thing to keep in mind is that as you dial this the smaller number takes the blade inside the larger number means the blade's going to come out further so they recommend that when you start with this you're going to take and turn this all the way turn this dial all the way to the right and then the blade will be coming out the bottom it's out as far as it will go and now you're going to twist it back to the setting that you want to use in my case uh, i am going to put it on a one because i know that i'm going to be cutting some thin paper and a one is plenty uh, deep for that for my use then when you go to put this inside of this holder this is going to be up you're going to drop this straight in with the label facing forward and push it in and then you're going to put this handle down and that locks this in place so that it can't move and it can't jump around so again drop this straight down push this down and then hold your blade in place okay then the next part of the machine is this part here and this is a USB port and we're going to talk a little bit about how you use this USB port but I wanted to point out where it is on the machine the next part is this opening in the back and this is where the mat is going to come through so when you feed your mat you're going to feed it from the front of the machine it's going to come out it's going to scan fully and then it's going to go back in again so when you're using your machine you need to make sure that you have plenty of clearance both front and back on the machine very important because if if this bumps into something you're going to get a bad scan and it could actually jam up in your machine and cause damage so again make sure you've got plenty of room on both ends which is why when I'm demoing the machine I'm setting it like this and not front to back because I don't have enough clearance space behind it and then finally uh, here you, you'll find your serial number number one and you'll find the model number as well um, but those are also on the screen um, and then here you've got your plug for your AC um, adapter so you can go ahead and plug it in there and give it power okay so let's get this turned back around the way we had it okay so now we've talked about the different parts of the machine and I've showed you where they're located and now we're going to focus on the operation panel and I'm going to show you all the different features and functions and what each of the buttons do and how the menu structure is set up and hopefully that'll make it easier when you get your machine that you'll be able to watch this and then follow along very quickly and figure out uh, where you need to find the different functions of your machine <clears throat> so we're going to start with picking up the panel um, and again the really important thing about this is that you want to be very gentle with this and that you want to make sure that you are locking it into place and when you get ready to push it back down that you're going to bring it all the way forward and then lay it down gently okay so again we start with the first setting you'll hear it click second setting click third setting click and now it's in the position where i'm going to use it for our demo if you wanted to put it back down again you lean it forward and then drop it all the way down when it's in the up position you don't want to try to lean it backward um, because if you just lay it try to lay it back down you're going to actually going to break it so again we're going to bring it to one and then to two and then to three 
and we're going to go ahead and work through the menu structure. So let me grab my stylus and basically you've got five buttons on here and the first one is this on off button. This is our power button and we're going to go ahead and push that so that our display lights up and you can see what we're looking at and uh, then we've got the next button down is the home button and the home button is great anytime that you maybe get lost in the menu structure you're not sure where to go you can push the home button and go back to the beginning and start over the next button down is the settings button and we're going to go into that in more detail and then over here on the right side you've got the load and unload button that's the button you push to make your Mac go in and out of the machine. And then you've got the start stop button. And you'll notice that this button is not black like the others, it's clear. And this one lights up. So anytime the machine is ready to, to do a function and it's ready for you to make a choice that you're ready to go, like cutting or scanning, this will light up. And that's your indication that it's asking you to say, I want to go ahead and do this. Um, and if you are ever in the process of doing something on the machine and something gets screwed up, the mat gets fed in crooked or something, you can always hit that button to stop and then read the message on the machine to know what to do next. Um, so the machine's very intuitive. It's very good at guiding you through the process and the steps. Um, and then once you learn what the different icons on the different screens mean, uh, it'll be very easy. So let's start with, again, we've got the home button and you'll see here that it says the carriage and mat will move to the initial position keep your hands away from the carriage this is the carriage so anytime that you are starting the machine up this one is going to move when you hit ok this is going to set itself where it needs to be for operation so you don't want to have your hand anywhere under here because it, it's sharp and this blade is, is sticking out of the bottom there um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, well, before I go to that, you've got two icons here. One is pattern and one is scan. So when you are on the home screen, you can choose pattern and that gives you all of the patterns that are stored within the machine. So what you've got there is you've got, uh, first you've got a test button and we're actually going to go through the test process in a moment. And then you've got a save data button and the save data button tells you that there are two places that you can save uh, files and save images. One is the machine itself and the other is the USB um, and that would be the thumb drive that you put in on the side of the machine here. Um, so in either of those locations you can go and look for files. So I can go to the machine and I can say these are projects that I've already done, that's the one I want to use, select it and then move forward. If you are um, again want to go back, you can go back here you can say I'm going to choose the thumb drive or you can go back to the beginning and say well I'm going to choose one of these pre-made shapes and again they've got um, these shapes are all different types of uh, geometric uh, shapes and some really neat little scallops and, and banners and, and different types of things. I'll show them to you very quickly. Um, and then what you're going to find over here is this is page one of 10. So there's a total of 10 pages of images here. They match the pink book that I showed you at the very beginning. Um, and you're going to use the up and down arrow keys to navigate between the pages. So we're now on page one. Now we go to page two, page three, page four, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Or you can hold this down um, you know, and let's say that this is the one you wanted to use. You would just select it and then you would work on the shape itself uh, in that menu and we're going to we're going to do a little sample project and then I'll walk you through that and so again we're going to go back now we've also got these fun little holiday images um, we've got different sayings uh, we've got borders got different fonts that we can use and then last but not least we've got all these really great quilt block shapes so you can choose any of those. Um, so now we're done in this screen, right? Go back to home. If you wanted to do any scanning, you want to scan your own images in, you would push this and then you have several different selections. So you can scan an item and save it to the USB. So if you wanted to use the machine just as a scanner, you can go ahead and put your image on your mat, scan it in, hit scan to USB, and it will save it to the USB file. And that way you can take your scanned image and use it however you need to on your computer or mobile device. Um, if you're going to do other scanning on the machine, there are two options, direct cut and scan to cut data. 
and the direct cut basically will enable you um, to put an item on there and then scan it in and then cut around that item and you will have control over what you're going to do and again I'll do a little demo later so you can see how that works. Um, if you want to manipulate how the cutting is done, for instance, let's say that you are feeding in an image of a leaf and you want to be able to cut around the leaf but also maybe cut some of the interior of the leaf you would want to push this menu and again we'll go through that in this in the follow-up uh, video we will walk through the process of doing that and I'll show you some pretty cool things the machine can do so those are your two different options in terms of scanning okay so again we're going to go back here now we're going to go on to the settings menu so this is the settings menu and it's pretty self-explanatory again there's five pages we're on page one of five and you can scroll through the different pages just like that just like we did on the other one and we're going to start with uh, the English or with a language. In this case, we have it set to English. Then you can go to the unit of measurement, meaning how is the device going to measure items? And you can choose millimeters or inches. I have it selected as inches. And then you're going to go to cut area. And the cut area is currently set up to work with the 12 by 12 mat. However, they do have 12 by 24 mats. Um, available and if you're going to use one of those and you'd want to come in here and adjust these sizes so that it matches the mat that you're using and then finally there is a background uh, button here and that is for uh, low contrast or lower and high contrast so if you want the background to really show up um, against an image if you've got an image that's tough to see you may want to adjust the background display here okay um, and then oh, let's go back here and now we're going to go down to page two so page two uh, we've got four controls here one is cut speed one is cut pressure one is draw speed and one is draw pressure so the cut speed and the cut pressure relate to this blade housing and they relate to how fast is the blade going to move how fast is the carriage going to move across the machine and then also the pressure that it's putting down onto the piece of material that you're cutting and you can adjust those here by using the plus and minus keys okay and I have mine set right now the cut speed at three and the cut pressure at zero um, and those have worked pretty well so I'm going to leave them at those settings now additionally you can buy pens that go into this holder and so you would just pop this up you would pull this out and you would put your pen holder in there which with whatever color pen you want to use again put it in lock it in place and now instead of this cutting it's going to be drawing any of your images so again you can adjust the speed and the pressure Page three, um, we have an auto shutdown, and this basically is the setting that you place on the machine to tell the machine when you want it to shut down. So if there's no activity going on the machine, what time should it, should it shut down? Mine is set for one hour. So if I don't turn the machine off in one hour, it'll automatically shut down. Um, and then buzzer sound. So every time I've touched the screen, you've heard the buzzer sound. If I don't want to hear any sound, I can choose to have it off. But for me, especially with using the bounding boxes around the images, I like to have that sound because that tells me that the screen is recognizing that my stylus is touching it. So I prefer to have it on and you'll hear it when I turn it back on. So that's the sound that it makes. Um, and then there's a seam allowance and a pattern interval. And this is so that if you're going to alter a pattern that you can change the seam allowance. And then if you're going to have um, a pattern, let's say you've got multiple items lined up, the pattern interval, it tells the machine how far apart to cut them, right? So maybe you want them a quarter inch or a half inch or one inch apart, and you can set that here, and then the machine knows how far apart to space them when it does its cutting. The next one is the opening screen, and again, that was the screen that you saw there. You can turn it on and off if you prefer. And then the last screen has your serial number and the version number and the, the version number is the number of the software. Okay, so then we're gonna to go to the load and unload button. And in order to use that, we're gonna get out our mat. And we took the clear cover off of our mat before we placed it in. So this is the clear cover 
that comes on this mat and when the mat is not in use you want to have this clear cover on there it keeps the adhesive fresh uh, keeps the mat from getting dusty and dirty um, and you want to make sure that you keep this cover in a safe place don't get it creased or lose it because you're going to need it so when you go to uh, put your mat in your machine you're going to i recommend that you hold your hand under it like this you don't have to um, but as you notice if you don't it's dragging over the edge here and i think that it pulls in straighter if you're kind of giving it a little bit of help underneath like this um, and again, that's not something the manufacturer suggests you do. It's just something that I found makes the mat feed in very, very smoothly. Um, and it makes me feel more comfortable. So you'll notice that there are rollers here. So there's a roller that's going to pull this mat in. And right now this mat is sticky, right? And it doesn't have anything on it. So we're not going to pull it all the way in, but I do want to show you how to load it. So when you go in here, you hit the load button. And that loads your mat. Okay, now your mat is ready to go. Now again, because we don't have any paper on here, I don't want to feed it in with that adhesive exposed. So I'm just going to hit the button again and that unloads it. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and place our protective sheet back over our mat. Stick it down. Um, and then again, finally, the last button is the start stop button. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper and we're going to try doing uh, just a little uh, cut test. And this is basically uh, that there is a in the owner's manual, it suggests that you do a cut test just to make sure that the machine is working properly, that you've got the blade holded, holder seated properly, that your mats, um, the right mat, etc. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper and we're going to go ahead and put it in and do our test cut real quick. So here's our mat, peel off our protective sheet. Grab some paper. And in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and use um, standard copier paper. It works fine for this. Um, and the only suggestion I will make, first of all, you need to make sure that it's well adhered, especially these edges that are gonna feed into the machine. You want to make sure those are laid flat. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this mat in what looks to be upside down, right? Because the name's up here. And I'm going to put it in this way. It doesn't matter which way you put the mat in. It'll feed from either end. So if for any reason you have any damage to one end of the mat, then feed it from the other end. And that way you shouldn't have any problems with it. Um, and so we're going to make sure that we've got our blade set properly. In this case, because this is very thin paper, we want our blade on one and our blade's currently on two. So we're gonna lift it out of here. And I'm gonna show you here, this right now it's at two. We're gonna turn it down to one because that's as thick, as deep as we need it to cut. We're gonna put it back in the holder, label out, and then lock it back in place, okay? And then we're gonna set our mat in here, support it from the bottom, and make sure this is adhered, and we're gonna hit the load button. Okay, make sure we're nice and secure there. And then we're going to hit um, pattern because we want to do the test and the test is within the pattern screen, which is what is already stored on the machine. So we're going to hit pattern and we're going to hit test. And for paper, they suggest you do the second one, which is T02, it's a triangle. And what you're going to see now is that our teeny little triangle is right here in the middle. And if we want to change the size of that, we can do that with these height and width buttons. We can also change how many there are here. Um, and a couple things I want to point out here. First of all, these right now are set to be proportionate. So if I change the width from 0.45 to 0.46, you'll notice that the height went from 0.39 to 0.40. So anytime I touch one of these, the other one is going to change in a corresponding manner. If you want to change one of these measurements without the other one, push this button down here, and that enables these two measurements to be adjusted independently. So I want them to adjust together, so I'm going to take that back off. Um, and right now it's set to do one triangle. Uh, first of all, I think the triangle is too small. I want to cut it a little bit bigger so that I can really see it. And so I'm going to make the height um, maybe half an inch. And rather than having to push each number like this, you can hold them down until it 
scrolls up to the right number. So we're going to make it 63 and this is going to be 73. So we've got one little triangle there and I'm going to cut three of them. And that's mostly so I can show you another function on another screen. So we've now got our, our, width, or our width and height on our triangle set. We've chosen that we want three of them and we hit set. Okay, now you can see that these are up here in this left-hand corner. Well, what's the problem with that? If you look here at our mat, we don't have paper in this corner, right? The, the system is putting it automatically into that corner because those are images that exist within the machine. But it doesn't know that we don't have any paper over here. The mat is nicely lined with grid lines. So you've got these grid lines going this way and grid lines going this way. And you can use those to figure out where to put things on the screen because the screen is a direct representation of what's on the mat. So here we can see that we've got a triangle in this first column where we don't have paper. We need all of our triangles to be from the second column over up at the edge. So we're going to grab the first little triangle and we're just going to slide him over here. And it doesn't really matter where we put him, but we want to make sure that our triangles are not in this first column where there's no paper. Okay, now we say yes, that's exactly what we want. That'll cut right in the right place on the paper. We hit OK and we hit Cut. Now you'll notice that this is ready to go and it's asking, do you want to start? So when that button lights up, you hit Start. Okay, and I can see that it's done our cutting. It says finished cutting. We hit OK, and then we're going to unload our paper. Okay, and now we can peel up the part that was cut, and you can see the three little triangles here. Put my hand behind there so it's a little more visual. Uh, and then we can peel up our little triangles. And again, you can use your spatula that came with the machine or you can pick them up by hand. On this really thin paper, I find that it's actually easier to pick this up either with my fingernails um, or with a pair of tweezers. So if you have a nice little pair of craft tweezers, um, I've got this little pair by Imagine S that are lighted and those would work well to take things off the mat. So we've got our test cut done and we know that things worked well. Now what you're going to see is that these images are still here and we're done, right? So we want to go back and we want to maybe go to the home screen. And the message that you're going to get anytime you're finished working with a pattern or a design is it'll say, OK to delete all patterns. If I wanted to keep that pattern, and use it again, then I would want to hit cancel and I'd want to save it. So I'd hit cancel and I'd go over here and save and I could save it to the machine. Uh, because I don't want to keep it, I'm just going to hit OK. And now the machine is ready to go again. Um, so that's basically our test cut. Um, and I think that it's probably pretty important to walk through again the options that you have here. So you've got two different mats. You have a low tack adhesive mat and you have your standard mat and you have two blades. You have a standard blade and then you have the deep cut blade and you can adjust the blade depth, meaning the one through, let's see, I think it's one through 12. Yes, one through 12. So the, the little markings go one through 12. You can adjust that. And then you can also, again, adjust the speed and the uh, pressure. And again, you do that by going to the settings. And you're going to scroll down here to the second page. And then you've got cut speed and cut pressure. And you can adjust those. In the owner's manual, there's a really wonderful chart that tells you exactly for which type of material you're using, exactly how to set the blade, which mat to use, how to adjust the cut speed and the cut pressure, or if you're drawing the draw speed and the draw pressure and the, the pen in here. Uh, so there's lots of options for the ways to do it, and some of it just takes a little trial and error. You may, you may have to go through this several times, and you may put some material on there and think that it's going to cut perfectly, and it may say that in the guide, but your material may be a little bit thinner or thicker than what they had in mind when they're talking about a specific material. 
For instance, some of my tests I used pattern paper and I had three different thicknesses of pattern paper. Now they're all classified pattern paper, um, but one required a setting one on the blade and one required a setting two on the blade. And the third one actually could have gone either way. I think that it would have worked probably okay either way. And again, I could have also adjusted the speed and the pressure and then played around with that a little bit as well. Um, and that will make a big difference, mostly when you're putting materials on here, things like fabric, uh, things like uh, leather, which you can also cut on here. Um, then you may want to adjust those things. And again, I would recommend that you refer to your owner's manual and uh, look at the guide there. Start with what they recommend and then make some adjustments after you play around with it a little bit. Okay, so we've talked about those. We've talked about the different types of mats. Um, again, now that we're done with our mat, we are going to take our plastic and put it over the top and make sure that it stays protected. We've talked about our blades and how to prepare them. What we haven't really talked about um, is saving data. So one of the things that um, we're gonna wanna do is we're going to go back to the home screen here and we are going to actually put something in and then save it to the machine so you can see that how that works. This really fun little paper by Simple Stories and again I'm going to adhere this over here make sure that it's pressed down real well I'm going to put it into the machine, put your mat right in between these two notches, hit the load unload button, make sure your, your paper is well adhered on the end, and then we're going to hit, um, let's do pattern, and I'm going to actually try to cut out um, some letters out of this. So I'm going to hit that and I'm going to pick these big letters and I'm going to say hello. Okay, so we've got our letters. I'm going to hit OK and these are going to be five inches up and that's fine. I like that. Um, looks good. But again, our paper is over here. Our letters are over here. So we're going to want to move all of these over to this side, right? And we're going to just drag them over here and put it right about there. That should be plenty. Let's, okay, we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to hit Cut. And again, our light comes on. Hit Start. Okay, now we're finished cutting. We're going to unload our paper. And what I want to point out here is that it did start to cut them. However, they didn't come all the way out. And why is that? Again, uh, that is because we didn't have our blade depth set correctly, right? So we went from a very thin paper where we had the blade set on one to a thicker paper. Again, this is a pattern paper, but it is thicker and it should have been set on two. So we're going to try that again. We're going to pop out our blade. We're going to turn it from one to two. I'm going to put it back in the holder, push this down, and I'm going to turn our paper around. I'm going to put it down here, get it adhered. I'm going to load our paper in. And it's still got our design up there. We want it to cut. And we're going to hit stop, start, stop. Okay, we're finished cutting and we're going to unload our mat. And you never want to pull the mat out. Make sure that you always use this unload button here. 
And now we're going to lift this up, and as you can see, it cut out our little hello letters. And we have these really fun little letters to work with here. So let's put those out. And again, this comes off pretty easily. Um, but if, you, if it was ever really stuck, you can use your little spatula to get it off. And again, we've got our little letters. So let's put those out. Let you take a look at how nicely it cuts them. So we've got our little word there. And again, then we've got two things we can use. We can use our paper. We can use our letters. We can also use our paper as a stencil. Um, you could also adhere the letters down and spray over them and then have a reverse stencil. Okay. So now we've finished with this design and we're going to hit the home key. And it's going to ask, do you want to delete all patterns? Well, we don't want to delete that pattern. I like the way the word came out. I want to keep it. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to back up here and I'm going to go to save. Okay, and now it gives me a choice. I can save it to the machine or I can save it to a USB thumb drive. I want to save it to the machine. So I'm going to hit that and then it's going to save it and it tells me what the file name is. This is the file name. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now we're done. And now you can say yes, you can get rid of the patterns. Mm, let's go back here, hit OK. Now if we go into pattern and we go to saved data, which is where we just saved our pattern to, we can go in here to the machine and we can see this is our latest pattern that we just created. And if you ever want to use any of these again, you would just select it, it comes right back up, you hit OK, and then again you can go through the process we just went through. Okay, so that is it for testing out the machine uh, on this tutorial. And what um, I want to focus a little bit on now is some of the maintenance things on this machine. So first of all, we're going to start by safely dropping our screen back down. So again, we're going to pick the screen forward and lay it down. And we're going to turn the power button off and we're going to close the lid. So in terms of the places that you could um, do any maintenance on the machine, there's about four places that you can do some regular cleaning, um, but they need to be done in a very specific way. So first of all, you can wipe off the surface of the cover inside here and out because it will get dusty and also your screen here. And I recommend that you use a very soft cloth. Uh, the manufacturer recommends that you use a soft cloth um, that's slightly damp, so maybe a microfiber cloth, and I would suggest that you get one just for your machine. They're very inexpensive at Target or any other uh, little home, or home goods store, um, and then you can take that cloth, keep it with the machine, and that way you don't have to worry that maybe something uh, rough gets on that cloth and then scratches either of these surfaces. So that's the first place you can clean. The next place that you can clean is around this carriage and the blade housing. So again, you lift this up to remove your blade, open this up, and then you can do some of the, the cleaning with a very small brush. So you could use um, a soft toothbrush or a, a brush that's meant for a computer keyboard, something that's soft but um, firm enough that it can get in there and get the dust. And then you can also clean around in here as well. And that's especially important as you are uh, using fabrics um, because when you are doing any kind of cutting on fabrics, as you know, you're going to get threads and fibers and things that are going to build up. The same with paper. You get a lot of paper dust and you'll want to make sure to clean this out regularly so it doesn't gum up the machine. Uh, or wear the blades out quickly. Um, and then, so we've got those areas taken care of. Then we're going to turn the machine upside down. And what you're going to see here is this bar. And in order to take this out, all you're going to do is squeeze on this little tab here and lift this out. This area here is covering the, the scanner glass. So when your, your mat goes through your machine, this area here is where the scanning is actually taking place. And so every once in a while, you're going to want to open this up and use, again, a slightly damp, soft cloth, something that doesn't have any kind of uh, cleaner on it. You do not want to put alcohol or any kind of cleaner on that surface and just wipe that gently, let it dry, and then just replace this piece. And it's very easy to do that. 
Okay. So let's put our mat away, get the cover back on it so that we don't dry out the adhesive. We've got uh, pretty hot lights in this room and uh, things dry very quickly, which is great for adhesive, not so or for uh, projects, but not so good for that adhesive on that mat cover. Uh, so a few things that the manufacturer recommends. Uh, you do not want to use any kind of lame or foil in this machine. And the reason being is that those products can break apart. And if you put them in and they get caught up on a blade, if you don't have the, the pressure or the blade setting right, they can uh, fall apart and then that could gum up your machine and cause some damage to it. Um, second thing is that you don't want to use any kind of mirrored surfaces or really high gloss surfaces. Uh, things like transparencies or real high gloss paper probably is not going to scan very well. It's fine to go through the machine, but you're not going to get a really clean scan. And then finally, um, anything with a mirrored like a mirrored surface um, is probably not going to scan very well. Um, and then one thing that I thought was very interesting is that when you put in anything that has a fluorescent uh, markings on it. So let's say that you had an old college textbook and you wanted to scan in one of the pages. You took the page out of the book and you were going to put it in. The area where the fluorescent markings are is probably not going to scan very well. You can try it, um, but most probably it's going to either leave a black mark and you won't be able to see the words underneath or it's just not going to scan in that area. Um, so that's another thing the manufacturer pointed out to me um, and I just wanted to pass that on in case for some reason you have fluorescent markings on something that you want to scan in. Let's talk a little bit about the additional features of the machine. So one thing you can do is you can edit patterns. So again I talked about whether that's a pattern like a, a quilt pattern or perhaps it's a, a paper cutting, paper piecing pattern. You can put those in and you can adjust them and you can make changes to them which is a really, really cool thing. So think about if you wanted to resize some patterns that you wanted to use, um, you can do that with the machine. Uh, another thing that it can do is it can weld letters and images. So for example, let's say that you've got two hearts and you want them interlocking and you want them to be cut out as one item. Um, you can very easily do that. You can go into the, to the pattern screen, you can find the hearts, you can grab two or three or however many you want, put them on your mat, overlap them, and then use the tools to do the welding. And in our future video, we will walk you through that and show you how that works. Um, but it's actually very cool. It's a, it's a really neat thing. And you can do the same thing with letters. Uh, the only thing you have to remember is when you're going to overlap the letters, uh, depending on how the letters are formed and whether they have cutouts in them, um, the cutter may cut differently on those than some other letters. So again, that's probably going to be a trial and error type of thing that you'll just have to play around with it and see how it works and then make some adjustments to get what you want. Um, let's see, you can draw with pens. We talked a little bit about that. So let's say that you are an artist and you want to print some cards out for a craft event or perhaps you're doing some decorations or um, favors for a wedding. Uh, you could make your image, scan it in, and then duplicate it as many times as you want and it'll draw that out and then you can put your blade back into the blade holder and then you can cut all those items out. So that would save a lot of time if you're having to mass produce something. So think about even when you're making uh, Christmas cards or Valentine's Day cards and you've got a lot of them to do, you could come up with your image, scan it in, and then create a whole bunch of them all at one time very, very quickly. Um, and then finally, um, again, you can use this as just a regular scanner because Brother is started out as a office uh, machine company. Uh, they had copiers and scanners and printers. Uh, they are very well known for having good quality scanners. And so that's the scanner that's built into this machine. And you can just use it as a regular scanner. Put your item on the mat, slide it through, and then you can save that off either to the machine or you can save it off to the thumb drive and then take the thumb drive and use it with your computer or your mobile device. Um, and then finally, I would just like to say that I think the overall experience with this machine has been really, really good. It's a very easy to use machine uh, right out of the box, very easy to set up. I was set up and cutting in about two minutes. Um, so I think that you will probably find the same thing, especially if you go back and watch the video and look at exactly how to do that. Um, but I think that their manuals are very, very well written. They've got great wording, uh, very clear instructions, but they also have lots of visuals. So if you're more of a visual person, you can follow the visuals as well. So that is going to wrap it up for part one of our Brother Scan and Cut review. 
and uh, hopefully you will come back and join us for part two where we will actually do some of the fun projects that uh, this machine is capable of and then the more we play around with the machine and test things out uh, then we'll come back from time to time and show you different ways that you can use it to create some really unique projects. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the review. Again, all of our reviews are unbiased, meaning that the manufacturers send their equipment to us and they have no control over the outcome of the review. Uh, so they trust us to be uh, honest with you and share the great things about the machine, but also bring your attention to the shortcomings. Uh, and that's really our goal here is we want you to be an educated consumer. So if you are gonna buy a machine such as the one we just reviewed, uh, that you know what you're getting into before you do make that purchase. And I think if you were to ask me overall on this machine, I think it's a great buy. And uh, we will, at the end of the video, uh, link to the blog post that's associated with this review. And we'll have lots of additional information in there, including links to the Brothers site and their design team and all of the different uh, materials and things that you can get for the machine. Uh, and then we'll also provide the uh, pricing information and links to where you can pick up the machines. And those will all be down in the show notes. And that's going to be uh, right down there, right down there at the bottom. Um, and again, if you are watching this on YouTube, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down in the comments and we'll come back and check for those occasionally and provide answers for you. And if it's something we don't know, then we will contact Brother and try to find out for you. Uh, and then if you're reading this or watching the video and reading the blog post, uh, you can also leave comments there and we will do the same. We'll do our best to find answers for you and get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So again, thanks so much for joining us for the review today. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much.